Johnny Harris is one of the most recognizable documentary storytellers on YouTube. His videos are packed with stunning visuals, dynamic animations, and a signature editing style that keeps viewers hooked from start to finish. The way he blends motion graphics, maps, and cinematic effects makes his documentaries feel both engaging and high quality. It is not the first time that communist tanks have rolled over gallant men and women. Let the record show that our restraint is not inexhaustible. Today, in this video, I'll break down a specific scene from one of Johnny Harris's videos that showcases one of his best editing works. This scene is nearly one minute long and consists of 18 clips. It features various elements such as map animations, textured overlays, transitions, and well-placed text design that enhance the storytelling. We'll go step by step on how you can recreate it using CapCut. So, if you want to take your editing skills to the next level and learn how to edit documentaries like Johnny Harris, make sure to watch this video until the end and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you want to dive deeper into my editing process, get access to the exact assets I used, download my project files, and have direct conversations with me about anything related to editing in the community chat. You can join my Patreon, the link in the description. Now let's get jumped to the first clip. In this first clip, we're going to create a text animation like this. First, add a text layer to the timeline, then type in the text you want. For the font, I'm using CapCut's default font called Intellected Typewriter. After that, go to Animation, choose the Retro Typer animation as the In Animation, and set the duration to 3 seconds. Next, move forward to 1 second before the last frame, then press CTRL plus B to split the text layer. Go back one second and add a keyframe on transform. Now move forward to the last frame of this layer and slightly reduce the scale to create a zoom out effect. Now, select the split text layer and increase its scale like this. After that, compound both text layers. Here I'll add a film dust overlay for the background and the result looks like this. Add an adjustment layer and set the contrast to minus 18. Now, let's move on to the second clip. For the second clip, I'll add some assets, which are photos of these figures, then change them to black and white by lowering the saturation to the lowest level. I'll also insert a memo cutout between them. Next, I'll add some effects. The first effect is called 90s. And here are the settings. Also, I'll add an adjustment layer and only modify the whites to minus 34. Now, select all layers in clip 2, then compound them. After that, I just need to speed it up by going to the speed settings and setting it to 10x speed. The result looks like this. Now, I'll create a transition to smooth out the cut. First, I'll insert this film roll overlay, then position and trim it exactly at the cut between these two clips. Change the blending mode to screen. That's not all. I'll also add some effects to make the transition more dynamic. The first effect is TV Warble. Place it before the text layer cut and match its duration with the first clip. Use these settings. The second effect is Bad TV too. Put it on the second text layer and match its duration with the first effect. Now, let's move on to clip 3. First, I'll reuse the same film dust background from before, then, I'll add this memo. For this memo, first, I'll invert its colors by going to adjustment, and then curve, then flipping the curve upside down. 
Once that's done, I'll add a white stroke around it. First, slightly reduce the scale, then add a white background. After that, go to mask, then adjust it until it forms a stroke effect around the memo. Now compound both layers and position them properly. As we know, this memo consists of three pages, so we just need to duplicate it three times. To change the pages, just double-click the compound clip, replace the old memo page with a new one, align it, and select Replace Clip. Now, the page is changed without having to redo the edits. Repeat the same steps for page 3. After that, select all the compound layer and compound the again. Now I'm gonna make a zoom out effect at the first second using keyframes. Now press Alt and K and change the keyframes curves to ease to smooth the motion. Lastly, I'll copy paste the adjustment layer from before and place it on this clip. And the result is gonna look like this. Once done, let's move on to clip 4. So, let's begin by making the rough cut for clip 4. Here, I will add a white background. Then, add a text layer to create a title. For the font, I will use Typewriter. Next, select Retro Typewriter as the in animation and set its duration to 1 second. Then, choose Slide Up as the out animation. For clip 5, I only need to insert a photo of a historical figure. Then, lower the saturation to the minimum to create a black and white effect. Moving on to clip 6. First, use the white background again. You can duplicate it from the previous clip that uses the same background color. Then, I will also add the same historical figure's photo as in the previous clip. However, for this image, I will modify it using the masking tool. So, go to mask select rectangle, and adjust the mask like this. Then adjust the round corner setting to create rounded edges. Position the image here. After that, add a text layer to display the figure's name and their role. For the name, I will use the Sarah Bold font. And for the other text layers, I will use Sarah Regular. Additionally, add a vertical text on the edge of the image. For clip 7, I will be adding a map animation. First, import the map into the timeline. By the way, I created this map using Snazzy Map in Photo P. Uh, to add a 3D effect to the map, you need to apply an effect called Player 3. For the setting, set the texture to the lowest setting and simply adjust the rotation within the effect settings and also in the video settings until you get this perspective. Now, as you can see, in the first few seconds, there is a fade-in effect caused by the Player 3 effect. Since I don't need it, I will remove it. First, compound the layer, then simply trim the fade duration. Now that it's like this, I will add a line animation using a line asset that I created in Photopea. Then, change the blend mode to multiply. Now, let's animate it using masking. Go to mask, then select split. Rotate the mask 90 degrees. Then position it to the right until the line disappears. Now, add a keyframe. Move forward a few seconds, then shift the mask to the left until the line fully appears. So it's gonna look like this. Now I will create a cross line animation, and the steps are almost the same as before.
After animating it, compound the layer, then duplicate it. Flip the duplicated layer. Now, select both cross-line layers and compound them again. Then, just position them in the desired place. Now, select all the layers in this clip and compound them again because here, I will be adding a zoom-in effect. I will position the playhead a few seconds before the last frame, then add a keyframe in the transform settings. Move forward to the end of the frame, increase the scale, and reposition it to focus on the cross mark. Finally, press Alt plus K, right click on the last keyframe, and change all curves to ease. And here's the result. And that's the tutorial for today. In the next part of the tutorial I will continue to create clip 8 until clip 18th and also the finishing process where I will add some effects and texture which is gonna make the video cooler. Thank you guys for watching, leave a like if this video helped you, and also thanks to my Patreon for always support this channel, and I'll see you in the next part video.